Do you ever feel stuck like you're living your life on autopilot? Are you ready to shift into high gear and reach the success you so richly deserve? Welcome to the Play Big Movement podcast. I am your host, Sharon Lecter, entrepreneur, business strategist, and best-selling author. Playing big is not about settling for good enough or being comfortable. It is about reaching your highest potential and achieving your greatest success. Join me in my Play Big Movement as I interview top experts in business, money, and entrepreneurship, all ready to serve you and to help you play big, be number one in your field, live your legacy, and create maximum impact. Welcome to this segment of the Play Big Movement podcast. And today I have a very special guest, somebody who's very, um, very special person to me. It's Eric Swanson, Mr. Awesome. Thank you, Eric, for being with me today. Thank you. I appreciate being here. How are you? Woohoo! Yes, absolutely. Well, I've known Eric, I, gosh, probably 10 plus years. And uh, I love the, the, we'll talk the story about when we first met, but uh, Eric has, he's bringing such op- opportunity to people and enthusiasm. You know, he started Universal Seminars and now has um, morphed that and created Habitude Warrior and I think it's just really fun to see how he has evolved in, in his own life, as well as the, the offerings that he's giving to other people. But I want to go back to how Eric got started. So Eric, talk a little bit about the Eric Swanson before the one we know today. <laughs> the pre-Eric Swanson, you mean? <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Well, let's see. How, <laughs> how far back do you want to come? Uh, go. Let's see. Uh, the doctor came out. <laughs> and said, um, Mr. Swanson, Mrs. Swanson, you are the proud owner of a seven and a half pound closing uh, entity. He's going to close everyone. He's a great salesperson. Here you go. So apparently salespeople are born. So <laughs> how far back do you want to go? I was from, uh, let's see, I'm originally from DC, um, the pre-Eric Swanson. You know, back in the day, I used to wait tables. I'm not sure if your audience knows that. So I was uh, very much into into serving, you know, serving everyone really, serving your clients. But I was in the serving industry, in the hospitality industry, and I loved it. It was amazing. Um, that was uh, it was really a treat for me because it, it gave me a chance to meet a lot of people. And as you could probably tell by the last thirty four seconds you've known me so far in this podcast, everyone, you know that I'm pretty gregarious in the first place. So it was kind of fun uh, waiting tables and just getting getting to know people. So that's. That was my pre pre Eric Swanson. <laughs> How did you get from that to you ended up working with Brian Tracy, right? Correct. Yes. And I actually worked with, I met somebody through the restaurant industry. Uh, I was waiting tables in a place called Mezzaluna in, um, in Austin, Texas. And what I did was I met uh, somebody that actually worked for Brian Tracy and they, were, they brought me on and they introduced me to Brian and I was like, oh, this is great. And it changed my life right there. Yeah. It was one of those defining moments. So t- talk about the influence that Brian had on your life. I think that's pretty special. Oh my gosh. Uh, Brian had a great influence on me because, you know, one of the first things that Brian taught me to do was to diversify myself. So Brian said, look, I've got a lot of great information. You're going to learn a lot and study it and learn it. But, but don't just be Brian Tracy. Don't emulate just him. And, you know, utilize what, what works and put it in my own personality. So that's what I did. And then the other thing was he had mentioned to me was to diversify myself, to learn from other people. And that's, as you know, Sharon, that's what I did where I've, I've uh, you know, connected with all these different types of people from Jim Rohn back in the day to, um, to everyone, Jack Canfield, to Sharon Lecter, to everybody that I can, uh, I can really uh, harness information from. So I started doing that. One of my puppies is in my room. Sorry about that. He just made some noise. I don't know if you can hear it. By the way, you know those defining moments? Well, they were both in the room over there and the door was closed. Somehow they both know how to open the door and they're, they're now. So if one just like comes up here, that's, that's, that's what's happening. (laughs) No problem. No problem. So, you know, and you learned, you were with Brian for quite a while and then talk about the, the step that you took from, um, set, setting up your universal seminars when you decided to go out on your own. What was that, what was that yeah. internal push that gave you that initiative? <laughs> yeah, definitely. So what happened was I was 
working with Brian for, for a while, for about seven or eight years, something like that, eight years, I think. And working with him and, and, and uh, what they call repping him, you know, so I was representing him in different cities and, and uh, doing ticket sales and just uh, sales training and so forth. And then I realized, you know, maybe, maybe it's time to branch off and become my, my own entity. So I, I started Universal Seminars. And what I did, which was interesting, is um, I wanted to meet other individuals, other speakers out there. So I actually sought after all these other speakers and started putting them on my stage because they weren't putting me on their stage. <laughs> so I literally had to play big. Oh, play big. That's what I had to do. So I had to play big where I decided, okay, you know, like the uh, create it and they will come kind of thing or, or you know, the, the field of dreams kind of thing. So I, I built the field where, where the field was a seminar entity because as you know we all love us us speakers us speakers good grammar um, we all love uh, uh, getting on great stages and so forth so I decided okay I'm gonna design a great stage for people to have a platform to speak on and and I did that with universal seminars now the, the funny part was for a few years I don't know if you know this but for a few years I never put myself on the stage so finally someone's like you should be on there people are following you I'm like you're right <laughs> so I started doing that and, uh, and that's what kind of morphed into the Habitude Warrior Conference as well. So talk about that. What, what, how did you create Habitude Warrior? Where did that come from? Oh, do you, do you actually know that? I don't know if I told you the story yet. Do you, do you know it yet? No? Okay, so check this out. I was speaking with a, a, a really cool individual. His name's Jim. And he was a really great guy. Uh, he passed away around nine years ago. Uh, you may know who he is right now, but anyway, don't, don't, don't say it yet. So Jim and I are hanging out in Houston, Texas, and he comes up to me after we were both speaking on this stage, and I had Brian Tracy there as well. And Jim says, what, what, are, you, what are you doing? And I said, what, what do you mean, what am I doing? He goes, well, what do you, what do, you do? You, you work with Brian, what do you do? do you, and I said, I do sales training, I do this and that. He goes, yeah, but what do you really want to do? I said, Okay, and when, so, when Jim, about, I'll just tell you, Jim Rohn, when Jim Rohn asks you, what do you really want to do? You kind of ponder, you start thinking, okay, maybe, maybe he sees something that I don't see. So that's what happened, and, and I decided, uh, well, I had the conversation with him, and I said, look, you know, what I really want to do is I want to help. <laughs> first, first, I want to take a squeaky toy out of my dog's mouth in a second. I'm sorry. I'm, I don't know. I don't know if I should hit a timeout button and be right back or what. I'm just going to let him be. We'll figure it out in a second. So, so what happened was um, Jim and I were talking about that and, and I told him, I said, look, you know, I love sales. I love getting out there and, and prospecting and doing all these things and, and I can really share, share with people how to close more efficiently and so forth. But that's not my passion. My passion is to help people with their habits and their attitude. And I told him that, and he said, oh, habits and attitude, like put together. And I said, yeah. So I came up with the, the term habitude right there. So, and he said, you should run with that. I'm like, I'm going to. <laughs> so that's where the genesis. I didn't, I didn't realize that's what, that was from your conversation with Jim Rohn. Yeah, I was back in uh, years a, ago. What a gift, yeah. A little bit of his legacy to you, right? That's great. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Amazing soul. So Eric, you, know, we, you, you did already mention that you're very gregarious and you're always up, you're always upbeat, you're always high energy. Um, and literally from having spent all that time with Brian and stepping out into your own world where you truly are totally responsible for your own success, um, there had have been times during that and people watching and listening are probably asking, you know, how, you know, it sounds like it was an easy path. Talk mm. about those, those downs and ups and how you dealt how you maintained your your attitude as Mr. Awesome when something was really in the in the tank for you? Yeah, that's a great great question. Thank you for asking. So so what I do is this: I always feel that there's always you know there's you you need to like the show must go on, right? So you always want to show up. And the way I figure is this: I always want to serve, and that's that's what you and I have in so much in common. It's all about serving. And as you know, with with my father passing, you know I've got these initials that I use. That's it's NDSO, which just stands for no drama, serve others. So if you live by that, uh, that, that, that mantra that you're going to be more successful. So what I do is I realize that everyone's going to have challenges. We all have challenges. And if you don't have challenges, then something's wrong. <laughs> in, in my opinion, I believe that you, you're not growing if you don't have challenges that are stepping stones to, to move to the next level. So how do I deal with them is a great question. So what I do is this, I always look 
at, I mean, it, I'm going to make it real simple for you. I mean, for everyone to listen, it's, it is simple. It's just making that conscious decision and making your subconscious mind and your conscious mind in congruency with your decision. And my decision is I'm going to look at the bright side on a consistent level. And I know that there's going to be challenges, but I always ask myself, who better to deal with this challenge than me? So I say to myself, okay, if I'm great at being able to deal with this challenge with the, the, the love of God or whoever is your, your awesomeness inside of you, then step up and actually step up to, the, to, to handle that challenge and bite size it. Like Brian Tracy used to tell us years ago, you know, eat that frog. So eat, eat little, take little, little bites here and there. And those stepping stones will get you to the, to the ultimate goal. Now, I also use, and I think it's called a sigmoid curve. What I use is this, um, or I use a portion of the sigmoid curve. What that means to me is I'm always looking at there's going to be awesomeness, and then there's going to be a challenge. And then there's going to be an awesomeness, and then another challenge. And then another awesomeness and challenge. I always try to keep the awesomeness or the things that are going in, like Mikhail Csikszentmihalyi says, in flow. Right? You always want to keep things in flow in the positive. And that's what I do is I always look at it and, and say to myself within each, each day, each week, each month, each year. And I say, okay, did I do what I set out to do? Did I grow in this, in this capacity, you know, 70% and I only had 30% challenges. Great. That's a good uh, ratio. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So that's what I do. Absolutely. So um, what's not in your bio? What have we not talked about that really kind of defines who you are? Mike? Oh, I'm a great dancer. Um, I'm single. What else do you need? I mean, let's just talk. <laughs> okay, uh, ladies. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding, sort of. Okay, so <laughs> let's see. What's not my bio? Uh, wow, I, I've got a pretty long bio, actually. No, I'm just kidding. Um, let's see. I, I love people. I love animals. I love dogs, as you could tell earlier. <laughs> um, I love helping people. Uh, I'm not sure if that's actually in my bio. We should put that in bio, shouldn't we? Love to help people award. <laughs> And I, kind of cool. and I also think you all, you know, we talk about spotting opportunities and along the way, you know, you've changed <laughs> the essence of how you do the seminars, but you also saw an opportunity and you kind of stepped into the whole publishing world, didn't you? I mean, you've got quite a few books out now. Talk about a little bit about I do. that. Oh, yeah. Let's do a commercial break. Ready? Yeah. All right. So <laughs> I've got, let's see if I can do, I used to do, hold them all up like this with, with one hand. Uh, so I have a, a bunch of books that I've, I've written. Uh, you know how they say that you can get a ghost writer? Well, I thought I had a lot of ghost readers, <laughs> but apparently I actually have some, some readers out there, which is great. So I'm actually a five-time number one best-selling author um, through the books that I've, I've, uh, I've, I've written. And here's the deal with the – actually, I was just talking about this book two days, three days ago with another group. And I spoke at Harvard University because of this book, because somebody picked it up and said, oh my God, this is great. I need to share it with my team at Harvard. So I ended up working the details and, and speaking there. So my point to the listener is become an author. <laughs> become an author and go through the experts, get counsel. And that's through this young lady right here. I don't know if I'm pointing at you, but right there. Uh, so Sharon Lecter will show you how to do that. But what, um, what I did with this book, so every one of my books are the same. I don't go through a lot of stories. I'm not, you know, yes, I do, I do like storytelling. I think it's very powerful for speeches. But in my books, what I do is I literally tell you what I did to build my, so my whatever the topic is, my social media in this case. This is social media marketing and branding. And I literally give you 150 pages of, of my techniques of how to build my branding in social media. That's it. And then the time management, same thing. I show you, share with you about 50 different uh, techniques that I do to manage my time and to grow. So I, I just think that that's really important when you become an author to give your, your best out there so that people can learn and, hey, this has worked for me. Maybe it'll work for you as well. You know? Well, I think that's fantastic. And I think, you know, the, 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 uh, the side of you I want you to talk about is the side that I see. When, when, when Eric is put, putting together, we were just talking in October, he's got an event in, in Washington, D.C. So he's actually moved there. You're there right now um, in preparation and preparing for this event. And so between now and then, you'll probably do, what, 50 smaller talks in various yep. places to build yep. interest and excitement for that event. Exactly. You know, you, he's tireless, tireless, 24-7. 
<laughs> constantly working and reaching out and networking with people. So talk a little bit because you're a perfect example of the power of association. So talk about, obviously, with Brian and Jim Rohn, you've had tremendous um, powers of association that helped groom you. But you're, sure. you're carrying that torch for others as well because you're providing opportunities for young speakers. So talk about the power of association and the role it plays in your life. Yeah, great. Thank you. Uh, so uh, the association, it, it plays a huge amount of, of uh, importance in my life because if I wasn't, I, I figure this, if you want, there, there's an old saying, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go with a team, you know, and, and, and my team actually is you, <laughs> you know, my team is, is actually a combination of all these different great speakers that I surround myself with. And I put that platform together and they put their platforms for me to join on their stages as well. So it's, it's kind of like a, a give or take, you know, or, or, or I'll give and you give, you give back and reciprocate. So the power of association is huge. I actually have something called the elephant list, which I'm not sure if I shared this with you, but what I do is I write down on a piece of paper, like I'll, I'll grab a blank piece of paper and I'll write down um, five names of individuals that I want to surround myself with over the next three to six months. And I put it in the universe. And it's pretty cool because all of a sudden, like, it's so ironic. That person just shows up where you, you know, you're, you're at the airport and you see that person. And it's like so ironic that you got introduced to that person, but you put it in the universe here, which is kind of neat. And then what I do on the flip side of that page is I put five names of people I should stop surrounding myself with as much. Like limit your time, you know, and that's kind of like a time management thing where, you, you know, how many, how many people do you know that, you just want your time and your effort and so forth. And they really don't want to pay anything for it. Really. They, they want everything for free. So what I do is um, I limit my time with certain people because they, you know, we meet a lot of people that sometimes they're, they're negative. They just want to bring you down and don't allow their baggage to bring you down. <laughs> so I, uh, I limit my time that way. And people ask me like, well, what do you say to them? And I, I say, well, I always tell them I have an appointment and, and, and I usually do, but what if you don't have an appointment? I still have an appointment. Guess who my appointment's with? Me. Yourself. <laughs> Yourself, exactly. So uh, power association is huge. And the way I figure is this, you know, for your, your listeners, whatever industry you're in, I think that you should, what I call lateral referrals or industry, lateral uh, industry referrals. And what I mean by that is connecting with lateral type of industries, not just yours, but ones that are going to open up more doors. Because what we do is we tend to have tunnel vision or what I call we, we focus on locally rather than globally. When I started looking at global, my local business boomed, which is cool. So if you want to be busier in your particular, whatever city you're in, you want to be busy there, then start opening up different uh, global, uh, 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 what's it called, like um, uh, appearances or, or uh, uh, exposure. That's the word I'm looking for. So get a global exposure and then your local business will be like, oh my gosh, this person's huge. We need to get them in, right? So that's uh, it's it's really cool. But associate with the right people. Now, there's another thing on that. I know this is a run-on sentence, but I'm going with it. Check this out. <laughs> um, associate with the right people because a lot of us are asking advice from people who really don't know what they're doing or what they're talking about. And you're asking your friends, like like for instance, like if I want to be a best-selling author, I go to you. I don't go to my friend who's never written a book before, right? So ask the people who really know what's going on and connect the dots. Now, all of us, and this is another technique I have, write down three attributes that you have that you can bring to the table. Because for me, and I'll just say this straight out, like Sharon, you know that I bring three, probably three or four things that, that you don't bring, but I do because I'm, I'm a different entity. I'm, I'm whatever it is, you know, my experience or my this or that or whatever it is. And you bring that three or four or five things. Well, you bring like 250,000 things more. But, uh, but the, point, <laughs> the point is though, you want to bring those three or four major things and let those shine because then the so-called famous people out there, you know how we, we put all these people on pedestals? Well, they turn to be, turned out to be just regular people. They just do things a little quicker and better and more efficient and so forth and with the right people. So, so as this, as we start bringing this podcast interview to a close, I want, I, I what? I thought we were going five hours. Yeah. Some, something triggered in my mind and I wanted to ask you this because I think this is, you know, somebody in the audience may be listening or thinking, you know, there's so many personal development seminars out there. I know that, um, 
how do you select, you know, because not a lot of people just take anyone that shows up and you really are uh, more careful about the people that you put on your stage. Talk about what you're looking for and, and what you don't want from a standpoint, because your, your stages are pretty, pretty tight as to what you want to offer the audience. So talk about that a little bit. Correct. Thank you for saying that. And thank you for noticing. Yes. So what I do is I have kind of a mental checklist and what I look for are certain things and what I look for are things that are not, that, that we don't want on my stage. So what I look for on the positives is somebody who's going to help. They're there for the audience members first, first and foremost. Second, they're there for your colleagues, meaning all the rest of, we have 33 speakers typically on, at my uh, conference. So all 30 speakers or 33, you want to be there for them. And then thirdly, you want to be there for, let's say myself, you know, and, and, and uh, impressing us, I guess, at the, at the event. But the way you impress the company, myself, is by impressing and helping and assisting the audience members first. So, and then, and then the colleagues. And that's something that I'd like to talk about a little bit. But let me talk about the audience first. What I do is this, um, we have, as I said, 30 plus speakers. 95% of the speakers that are on my stage actually stay for all three days of the conference, which is kind of unheard of in, in, the, in our land because, you know, people are busy, they come in, they fly out, they're always, they just want their little one hour and then, and then they're gone. Well, we don't look for that. We look for people who are really going to be there for, to build the community. And that's, and I know you're, I, I actually learned that from you years ago because I, I see you at events and you show up, you're the first one there. You're, you're like, you're like Michael Jordan. You look just like Michael Jordan too. It's so crazy. <laughs> so you're the first one there and you're the last one to leave because you know that that's where all the, all the connections happen. It's, it's not just inside the, the seminar room, let's say it's outside. It's having that cup of, cup of coffee or, or tea with somebody and, and really getting to know them. So I think that's really important. And then the, the other thing I was mentioning in regard to your co-speakers or, or colleagues, and it could be any, any industry really, it's, it's really looking at helping others because I think that there's too many egos in, in, the, in the world these days. And if you go in with helping other people, especially your colleagues, then they're going to look at you and help you as well. And it, it just, it's what goes around. around. Uh, it's pretty amazing. Um, so I look for that. And what I don't look for is somebody who's just going to come in and, you know, they're, uh, somebody said something, uh, what do they call it? A roll? I heard two techniques uh, or uh, phrases, Rolodex something, uh, Rolodex whore is what I heard. <laughs> so somebody's looking for a role. Remember the Rolodexes back in the day where, you, you know, so somebody's just looking for connections and they're not looking to connect with everyone, then that's that's somebody I don't really look for. I like that. And looking for connections, not really looking to connect. I like that. Right. That's good. Yeah. And then the other thing is, um, what did I hear recently? I heard seminar butt. <laughs> that's what I heard. A seminar butt. What's a seminar butt? Well, a seminar butt is somebody who goes to a seminar and sits there. And you're just sitting there and you're watching the speaker way over there on stage. They get shuffled in by the bodyguards and they get shuffled out and so forth. And you, you don't really get to connect with that speaker. And then you're sitting there all day long. So you have seminar butt at the end of the day. So what we do is very different where we look for speakers that are, I mean, honestly, I'll just, I'll just say it right here. Okay. And then just don't tell anyone, don't let this podcast go viral. So here's what you do. I'm just kidding. Um, what you do is what I do is this. I look for speakers who are not just going to speak on stage, but actually speak everywhere around the community of our conference. So that now they're, they're actually having conversations off stage that's really gonna make a big difference. And that's, that's what I look for. And that's what the difference is between like a regular event and maybe something of, like ours and, and something uh, uh, hopefully other uh, conferences are doing the same. So Eric, if we, we, we potentially have uh, people that wanna become speakers, or people that are already speakers, or people that want to actually attend as a as an attendee, how can someone find you and find the list of your events? Yeah. Oh, thanks for, for saying that. So they can go to habitudewarriorconference.com. Uh, so it's kind of a long. Uh, I don't know if I have it written down somewhere. Um, another easy way to get, to do it is just go to awesomeswanson.com, and that'll bring you to a link, and and it'll have all the different uh, different links of my social media pages, as well as our conference, obviously. But Habitude is habit and attitude put together. So it's H-A-B-I-T-U-D-E, 
warriorconference.com. There you go. And so uh, as we close this out, share how you got the name Awesome. Okay. So, well, wait, I got to tell you the intro first. Uh, you, you had mentioned we were going to talk about how I met you. Mm-hmm. Can, I t- can I just tell you? Of course. So I got to tell you guys, look, everyone look at me right now. Right? Check this out. I was so scared of Sharon Lecter when I met her. I got to tell you, because she's so intimidating. I'm still scared of you. <laughs> but I love you so much. No, I'm not scared of you. But the thing is, I, I was so intimidated, and I went up to Sharon, and I said, oh, my God, you're Sharon Lecter. And she goes, yes, I am. She's so polite, so nice. She goes, what's your name? And I said, my name's Eric Swanson. And I shook your hand. And then I got nervous, and I ran away. <laughs> I did that like three times. It was hilarious. But, um, but then I got to know you, and I'm like, oh, my God, she's so nice. So Mr. Awesome. So I got a nickname called, called Mr. Awesome, and it's because uh, Brian Tracy and Les Brown were seeing uh, me speak on stage. And they, I was coming off a of stage, and – Les Brown turns to me and says, oh, man, you're, you're Mr. Awesome. That's what he called me when I came off the stage. I was like, oh, this is great. Now, when Les Brown calls you Mr. Awesome, you know what you do is you brand the heck out of that name. <laughs> so that's, that's how I got the name Mr. Awesome. And you are very, very awesome. And you know, you're, um, there are a lot of people out there that um, are one way on stage and another way off stage. And you are a very generous spirit on and off stage. So you are Mr. Awesome wherever you are. So thank you, thank you so much for being with me. And we're going to actually um, end this podcast and then we're going to do a short one that's going to be inside the private Facebook page. For all of you listening, please make sure you like us on iTunes. And, and if you're not signed up for our private Facebook page, Play Big Movement with Sharon Lecter, please do so so you can hear the rest of the story with Eric Swanson. Thank you, Eric. Can we do this? Can we, can we, we're going to go out of this box and we're going to go into another one? Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, I want to see you do it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. We'll see you on the other side. Thank you for listening to this segment of the Play Big Movement podcast. Please subscribe to iTunes and leave us a review, as well as join us in other areas of social media, Twitter, Instagram, and LinkedIn, at Sharon Lecter, and for Facebook, author Sharon Lecter. Thank you so much and have a fabulous day.